What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Spectators Baseball Podcast. We are on episode three. My name is Julie, and I am here with Kin, who is doing his best unfamiliar impression. I was thinking the, um, you know, the hula guys from Mario Super Sunshine. I, think it like I, this? I, I, no, no, no oh, idea. Actually, okay. well, that that's a that's a deep cut. That's what you remind me of there. What's that's, going on, brother? It's a deep cut. You know. I have something weird, and I know we've we've been talking the past 15 minutes before we started yeah. this podcast. I had go. something weird that I wanted to save for when the podcast started. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I was sitting at my desk today. I was at work, and for some reason, I was like, I just feel like reading. Okay. Rarefied air for me. I might have finished two books in my entire life. <laughs> um, okay. So the school I work at was having a book fair. I walked up there. I was like, can adults buy books too? Yeah. And they're like, of course, of course. So I just looked around and I work in a middle school. God. So I was I was looking around and I was like, wow, all these books are like for 12 year olds. Like, this is so cool. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm definitely going to read one of these. I found one book. I go on, And I went online. And it was like, oh, yeah, this reading level is for 12 to 17 year olds. I was like, nice. good enough. So I bought a book and I, I read 30 pages of a book today. Snaps. Why? Snaps. Don't know. I I don't know if my mic will pick that up. No, 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 it's okay. Proud, <laughs> proud of you. Just w- weird behavior, to be honest. Congrats on your Captain Underpants uh, journey. It's a it's a good. No, it's, a good it's actually. It, you know what? It's it's not Captain Underpants. <laughs> I don't right? know if I believe you, but that's fine. No, I was I actually to. I was actually sitting at a desk reading Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and I was like. <laughs> No, I'm going to go buy a book because this is stupid. Because <laughs> this sucks. Because <laughs> this is not fun. This is not fun. Um, How old are you? 23. 23. Interesting. Uh, two books at 23 is definitely a number. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, okay, okay. I might have willingly finished two okay, books in my okay. life. Yeah, like you got to do some for like your AR tests and stuff. Of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah. when you're in school, like we had to read the Odyssey. But like we read that as a class. We didn't have to... Yeah, you, you listen to Sally and, and Jonathan read it for like yeah. a chapter at a time. Yeah, and you yes. listen to that one kid in the class that couldn't fucking read that you hated hearing. <laughs> <laughs> and then like you learn that like people have crushes on each other because they keep picking each other back and forth. It's like stop it! Oh my god, Jonathan, stop making me read! Stop! Just read the book so we can leave. <laughs> Yeah, so congratulations on your on your uh, your new hobby. Is... You're a you're a book book club girly now. Proud of you for that. Oh my god, I can't wait to show up to my first club. I need to get some smut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's committed already. <laughs> this is the stupidest start yeah. to one of any of our episodes ever. Hey, hey man. You you gotta start with the smut and then everything else just completely goes downhill. It's <laughs> just how it goes. <laughs> everything else seems so mundane and, and irrelevant. Um yeah, I, I do specifically ask your age as well because I have I have the keys to a good transition and you don't. Okay. You're twenty three years old. So is Kansas City Royals superstar, Bobby <laughs> Witt Jr., baby. And today we got some crazy news. Bobby Witt gets the most money ever out of the Kansas City Royals organization. An 11-year, up to 14-year extension that starts at $288 million and can go up to $377 million. And if it does that, we'll take him to his age 37 season. No, more than that. I'm so wrong. No, I'm right. I'm him. Yeah, math is math and I'm him. Look at that. Bobby Witt, how are you feeling? I love this. This is awesome. Do we? Do you have a scene that shows, like, just me? Do you have a scene that does that? I don't, I'm just... I don't think random. so. Yeah. Oh, well, that's all right. I'll, I'll make sure. I'll get a little closer then. All right. <laughs> this is a message for all of the bootlicking owner lovers that think small market teams exist you know, you listen to your owners every year. We can't afford free agents. We can't afford to bring back our big stars. We're just the Oakland A's. I'm not a multi-billionaire. Yes, they can. They can all afford to pay their players. They can all afford free agents. And this is proof because small market Kansas City just dropped $300 million almost on Bobby Witt Jr. 
Thank you. Continue. That was awesome. I love, <laughs> dude. That was great. I wish I did have the scene there. That was awesome. No, I mean you're you're 100 right, and it there is clear. I mean, look at the Royals. They've been irrelevant for about a decade now, which is kind of weird to think about because they won a World Series in 2015. And Worst team to win a World Series in the past 10 years, anyway. Sorry. I don't. I don't fully agree, but that's that's neither here nor there. Um, but they won a World Series. They went to two, so they were they were cooking. Uh, they were a good team, and they were fun, and they had like momentum, and they built the team the right way, and they were bad, and then they were not as bad, and then they were really good, and then they won a World Series, and I was like, okay, cool. Money left, and guys got traded, and people went other places because they won a World Series. That's what happens. And then they've been bad since, and they haven't drafted overly well. And it's really tough in this league because drafting is brutal, right? And sometimes just guys get Tommy John, and that was the one pick, and you just spent a year winning 46 games, and that guy doesn't exist anymore. It happens. And so they haven't drafted the best. They have one of the worst farm systems in baseball, despite being one of the worst teams in baseball for almost a decade. And... The silver lining, the the giant aura and sphere of, oh, like calling to the fans. Just Bobby Wood Jr. And he was number one prospect, and he got called up, and he struggled a little bit, and then he didn't. Last year, 30-30 club, first ever Royal to beat a 30-30 club. And not only that, but, like, he was really, really good last year, too. Like, uh, like Stop. yeah, he was 30-30. But the second half specifically, he was, like, one of the 20 best players in baseball. And if you go to his Savant page, we're going to be doing a lot of Savant hunting today. I'm not going to show it like we did last week just because I don't feel like it. Uh, He was the 100th percentile base runner, which makes sense, right? He had, he had 49 steals. He's projected about that again, which is crazy. Uh, He has 50 home runs and 79 steals in two seasons. He is one of 11 players to ever do that in his first two seasons. And it's not 70. I think it's like 50 homers and and like 50 steals. It's like a lower number than 70. So he is in elite company already. Uh, Expected batting average is 95%. Expected slugging is 95%. His barrel and exit velos are about the 75th percentile. So everything about the way he's swinging the bat is really good. Uh, we talked about it a little bit last week. I would love it if he walked more. Please stop chasing as much. But that's something, again, he's 23 years old. He'll start getting on base bar. When you're a 100th percentile base runner, you need simply to walk at least 10% of the time. He didn't do that last year, which kind of sucks. You would love to see that. He also doesn't go oppo on any home runs. That's partially a product of the stadium. It's kind of a deep tough stadium to hit in in Kansas City but he's locked up and to see to your point I've been ranting for a second but to see to your point (laughs) uh them spend the money on him and obviously have him through the farm system for a couple years it's awesome to see a team be like hey you know what like things don't look overly great for what we have in the future but they look way worse without you so let's lock you in and we got this guy we have him. We we don't have many guys, but we do have this guy. Yeah. Um, and to to your point, and we did mention it um last episode as well. Definitely the only thing that scares me about Bobby Witt is the fact that he never walks and he chases. Yeah. Like Bobby Witt is Oh, this this is this is gonna be this is gonna sound rough, but I, I need you to understand there is a, a logical point here. I'm not a big batting average guy, but right. Bobby Witt is about like 30 batting average points from being Javi Baez if he can't figure out how to walk. I don't, the chase rate's not that bad, but I, I, I see the vision here. I see the vision. You, good you, defender. Understand, the, you yeah. understand the vision. Here. Good defender, can run bases, hits the ball hard, hits home no. runs, but will quite literally swing at a ball if you roll it to home plate. It's not that bad. <laughs> he's it's it's not that bad yet. It's not that bad yet. He's not Julio, and he's certainly not Javi Baez. But I mean, yeah, that those are the only real issues of concern. Uh, hopefully, he learns. It's kind of hard because it's not like they have a veteran over there. They did get Hunter Renfro, 
um, this off season. So like, not really like a like a vet that you like hope to teach him, but he's had some good hitting seasons. So you know, that's... definitely a Hunter Renfro fan. Yeah, I mean, he had a rough year last year, but I I do like the ad, and I think the Royals have had. It's weird to say, but the Royals have had a top five off season, which is gross because they haven't made any crazy moves, but they've made moves to help them be a competitive team in a non-competitive division. They get Renfro, they they signed Michael Walker, they signed Seth Lugo to an already pretty decent staff. So they have four quality starters now, like legitimately quality starters. They have Bobby Witt, they have Hunter Renfro, they got Adam Fraser, who's, you know, he's, he's a baseball player, certainly. Uh, MJ Melendez is pretty good. If Salvi can just DH this year. Please Freddie, just DH, Salvi. Please just we don't DH. want to watch you play defense we don't, anymore. We don't, we don't need that. Freddie Furman's, like, pretty good, too. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Like, they have some things, and Bobby is clearly, like, the guy, and they're hoping he takes even another step. Because if he played like he did in the second half last year for a full season, you're looking at, like, a 40 70 like what Acuna did last year, but at shortstop. Dude, you want to talk about someone that hates walks? Salvador Perez hates walks. He's never liked it. (laughs) He's never liked it. He hates his entire career. His entire career. And which is crazy because Salvi's had such a good hitting career despite like literally refusing to walk. Bro has been in the league, in the major leagues, the better part of 10 years now. He hasn't even walked 200 times. <laughs> that's that is wild. impressive. That is impressive. That is that's That is wild. actually super impressive. You know, he's the bottom one percentile for chase rate. Not shocked. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> you know, he's the, uh, <laughs> dude, 200? He hasn't done it 200 <laughs> times yet. <laughs> I know it's been bad. He can't even walk 20 times a season. (laughs) I've seen guys legitimately walk 20 times in like a two week span. There was a time, and and you know, this is judge in like the historic season he had, but there was a time where I watched Aaron judge get intentionally walked five times in three games. I watched it. That shit had me pissed. <laughs> if I watched that, <laughs> it was so annoying. And, I, like, and like the games were close, and I'm like, yeah, like it makes sense, but like, man, why I oughta, like, dude, Salvi, please, that's so, so funny. Not, not that this is really our focus today, but just because I happened to bring it up, <laughs> I actually, I want you to guess. I want you to throw a number out there. Career walk percentage, Salvador Perez. Career walk percentage. Yes. I mean, if he has less than two hundred. He's had like five thousand at bats, so <laughs> really, really quick maths. One hundred and eighty <laughs> divided by five thousand. I don't know the math there, but it's not good. That's not good at all. <laughs> What's the number? You just uh, throw out a guess, just, I, I, just for shits and gigs. Just uh, throw a number. Zero, you know it's low. Zero point. <laughs> it's not that low. <laughs> I was gonna say like zero point five percent. So what? Two percent. It's three point four percent. Three point. That feels high. It does feel high. Again, because he he has five thousand at bats. I don't know where in the five thousands. Huh. Okay. Shout out three percent. Top three percent, baby. Put that on his OnlyFans link. <laughs> <laughs> top three percent. <laughs> That's the wrong top three, my brother. Hey, so, <laughs> got to be the best at something. It's true. Got to be the best at something. So yeah, I mean. We we derailed a little bit, but the Bobby the Bobby contract's great. There's a clear line in the contract. I don't know if you saw it, where um, he can very clearly just become a Dodger or a Yankee. Um, it's when the thirty million a year kicks in in twenty twenty eight. He's only get like seven for the next couple, and then it's like thirty, thirty, thirty five, thirty five, and it's like, oh okay. If they trade him, here is when it happens. So hopefully they don't. I don't want to see him. I like to see the young guys. Get their deal, get their long term, and just be there. Like, that's fun. That'd be pretty cool. Be pretty if that cool. Happened, like know? imagine like the Royals are good in like three years. Like they make some really good free agents to get a good signing. One of their draft picks is like twenty four when they get him, and he comes up the next year, and all of a sudden they're good. It's like, or or they look pretty good in like three four years, and then they're like, oh man, Bobby's about to make thirty million. Like, <laughs> if, and then they just We're never good because they get rid what of him. <laughs> 
we have we have to keep making the fans believe that we can't afford him. So I, man, he's about to make thirty million. We might, guys, we really can't afford. It. God, no, guys, really, um, he plays for the Yankees now. He plays for the Yankees, <laughs> and this does suck too because you mentioned like Oakland, like specifically, like Oakland and like Colorado are like the teams I think of with like small market. You're telling me that the Oakland Athletics, who are objectively a top six organization historically in the league in terms of like success and the players and and history and 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 culture and everything they've been right can't afford marcus Semyon before he was really really good like they could have extended him before he went to the blue jays and they didn't and like matt olsen who's the best first baseman in baseball now maybe like dude i'd be willing to bet that the highest athletic contract is less than ten million. Currently, I, I'd be willing to bet. I don't know if that's true, but I just all well, the who on their head, like, who on their roster would make more? Yeah. They, <laughs> did you okay? So did you know that the, the A's don't actually do um their fan their fan fest anymore? They they stopped doing it like the early one because like people were boycotting stuff so there's like a third party company that throws their fan fest now it's just a a random group and they just like throw it it's like random people um 40 kind of separate but equal because it kind of goes alongside with that um for their promos this year there's not a single current player on any bobbleheads on any jersey nights anything None. All historic players. The highest paid player on their team was just signed, and it is Ross Stripling. Come on down. Dude, over under 10 million? What a line. Yeah. What a line. 12 and a half. Good line because nobody else hit it. So <laughs> I, I do also want it known the grossest thing I have seen in weeks is Ross Stripling and Alex Wood being the by a mile highest paid players on a team. Dude, it's actually crazy. Although Ross Stripling had a good year, so shout out to him. He's like actually not that bad. He will be traded at the deadline. Dude, real. I don't know if I mentioned this to you like when we weren't recording or on one of the most recent episodes, but it's kind of crazy that like the best consistent player on the A's for the past like five six years, um, position player I'll say, has been a Ledmus Diaz. Yeah, he's been okay. Despite being and, like, and that's the thing. Like, like he's not blooms. very good. No, yeah. he's like okay. It's like fine. And I remember when I said Except that to Brown's you, it was pretty like, good too, but he's not consistent. That's true. I remember when I said that to you, it was like it's some random second baseman that's okay at baseball. And then I saw Ledmus Diaz, and I was like, yeah, that's him. Like yeah, that's, that's the guy. He's he's okay. He actually plays shortstop, but either way, yeah, he's considered. He played a lot of second last year. He's okay. He's fine. Like he he exists on the field. Yeah, man. That's brutal. I, uh, you know, we don't need to. We're not here to like crap on A's fans, but like that's just the way it goes sometimes. And that's just the you know, when you have a good core, you want to try and trade for guys or keep your guys so that you can make a run. And you know, another. I'm so good with the transitions today. The Baltimore Orioles. They got a young crew, a big young crew with some really really good players. Not a lot of them are making any money. So like, hey man. Let's go bringing in a former Cy Young that, oh, by the way, has still had pretty good years despite not being a Cy Young again. And they go get Corbin Burns. They trade D.L. Hall, and I don't even remember the other guy, to go get Corbin Burns, one of the best I ground ball it, pitchers in the league. He's <sighs> handsome, long hair, aura. 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 I, I think it was like their number six and their number seventh prospect, which it's like, Obviously, I don't even know how you word this. Uh, my man Ryan Garcia was talking about it on Twitter, how like you can't really be mad at the Yankees for not attempting to match this deal because we don't know how highly the Brewers viewed you know DL Hall and I, neither of us know the other guy that was traded um, compared to like if we were to take one of our infielders and say. Who's who's a good Joey Ortiz prospect? Is, is the Joey is the Ortiz? Lad, yeah. yeah. Say if we were to take Oswald Peraza and Clark Schmidt, we we have no clue how the Brewers valued anything like that. Like we maybe the Yankees did make offers, but whatever. So as a Yankees fan, it's very easy to be like, 
oh, why didn't we match that? But really, like, you can't because maybe well, also, we did try. Well, also, but... he's a free agent after this year. So it's not – I can't imagine the Yankees were willing to go and give up even, like, middle of the prospect guys. Like, they weren't willing to give up, like, Roderick Urias when it's like, mm. do we want to give him up for Corbin for a year? Probably not. Like, we already have the one rental with Juan Soto, and if you go get a rental like Corbin – and the rental like Soto, you're not getting both of them next year. You're just not. So that that's definitely the, the vision. Uh, we'll, we'll see how he plays in Baltimore. I assume, he's only 29, I assume he'll get like a six-year extension. If I, if I were a betting man, he'll get a deal that has like two opt-outs that are team options towards the end of it, six-year deal or so, but it'll be like a lot of money. Like he'll make like 34 but the Orioles don't want to do like that many years, obviously. So because by the time this contract will be done, when they re up him, it'll be like, all right, well, we gotta pay Adley and Gunner and Jackson and Santown there again, or whoever the hell else, uh, Keston. Like they got a lot of young guys that they're gonna have to pay at some point. So you gotta like time that properly, you know. Um, but I think the the move is great because obviously they need another pitcher. Uh, they do get John Means back on a full healthy season, which would be nice for them. Grayson Rodriguez will hopefully get a little bit better for them. And, I mean, if John Means is your number four, that you're in a pretty good spot because John Means was their best pitcher and their best player for about four years. And he was, like, the heartbeat of, of a really bad Baltimore team for quite a while. So it's cool to see. They have an ace now. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking on their actual aces last year's name um well you got grayson rodriguez kyle know. bradish dean kramer yeah, that's their other Brian, starters kyle bradish kyle bradish had a really good year and i expect him to be good again because like numbers wise and like savant wise like he should be like him being good wasn't like surprising when you look at everything so you have him as number two and you're like whoa hold up they got a nice little staff all of a sudden especially in american league where Pitching staffs aren't overly deep. Outside of like Texas, maybe if they get back Montgomery, which I expect they will. But no, I like Cor I like Corbin. I think this is good. I think this makes them easily the favorites in the AL East and maybe the favorites in the American League in general. Which is interesting because I don't know if adding Corbin to any other team in the AL does that. But I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean, I think they're See, easily the best team in the AL East right now. I think they're very top heavy, though. I mean, you look at really, you look at their team. Mm -hmm. Adley and Gunner, great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ryan Mountcastle could really be. Good. He's a good player. He's good he's player. slightly above average hitter. He's a good player. And he plays defense. Well, he, he well he's in the field. Santander, again, slightly above average hitter. He's in the field. But you have two guys on this team, two position players that are projected over five war, and then everything after that is, well, they're there. They're pretty. They're like okay. Um, I don't necessarily love the Orioles were for potentially repeating the type of season they had last year. Um, I think maybe they were, I feel like they were a season too early. I do too. Losing yeah. Bautista hurts. Hmm. Cause he's out for the year or most of it, if not all of it. I really wouldn't be shocked if we look at this Orioles team and they're closer to like the 82, 83 win range. No, I don't. I, I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that. I think like the I think their like floor is like eighty six wins. I think that's their floor, especially with like. You look at how bad a lot of the American League is, right? And Boston didn't get better at all. Um, the, the Blue Jays didn't really get better at all. I mean, they got they got Justin Turner, which is probably something we can talk about here in a second too. But um, yeah, Blue Jays, yeah. They didn't really do a whole lot outside of that, which I do think the Justin Turner ad is good. They needed more offense. And the the Matt Chapman experiment at third was, like, really fun, but his second-half offense was so atrocious that, like, they, it was an actual black hole. 
Um, defense is cool and all, but if you're like negative war for half a season offensively, like who cares? Um, so I think Turner will be a nice bat. He won't even play third probably though. Probably DH a lot. Or who knows how they're going to do that. They have a lot of guys who can't play defense. So they have to like very tactically rotate their DH spot. I mean, everybody outside of the, the Red Sox in this division can win it. And we'll, we'll, and we'll talk more, I guess, like projections in terms of divisions and stuff in a, at a later episode. But I felt like it was necessary to bring up because I, I, I really do think they're the favorites now with Corbin. They might not have the best staff, but I think like their pitching as a whole is really good. And then they have the best third baseman in the division, best catcher in the division. Maybe I'm just a Yankee homer. I think you are. I'm, al- I'm always picking us to win the division. That's actually that's not true. Um, I haven't picked us to win our division in like five years. I want that to be known. Oh, well, you're you're just incorrect for that. Have we? 2022, we did. <laughs> we did. We won it that we year. Did. Guess what happened? Well, <laughs> I, I w- went to I went to game three against the Astros in the ALCS that year. Awful 20, time. Yeah. Hated it. That, that ALCS was rough. It was terrible. It was not good. They were hurt and, and slumping and, and poop was running down their leg. The moment was too big. It's just not good. What does that even mean? It's from a YouTube video. It's just like, the moment's too big. Poop running I'm down leg. I'm not sure how updated this is. What are you looking at? Um, looking at projected war by depth chart. Yeah, they're not. They're not super updated. DL Hall is still in the Orioles one. Corbin's not on okay. there, I think. Yeah. Okay. They're not it's super also, updated. It doesn't yet. even... Oh, it does go in order. Yeah, it goes Currently, in order, but it's not... The Yankees are projected war, third highest war. Yeah, they're, prob- they're probably going to be like... Graph they're probably going to be like second or third highest in win total. I don't know where to see that, but I'm sure... I'm sure they're going to be pretty high in, in that, too. Is that something we can see on... on um? Hmm. I don't know if that's I'm something we can sure. see on fan I'm graphs sure or not. Could probably find it somewhere if we really wanted to. Yeah. But But that's that's not a again, that's not a today issue. It's not a today issue. I just wanted to bring it up. Yeah, yeah, for real. Very So real. for the sake of narratives, Yankees are winning the East because they are projected the third highest war in the league and the next closest AL East team. So Looking at it, they're projected 48.5 war overall. Next closest AL East is Blue Jays at 44.4. So, like, we're we're winning the East. Hate to say it. You know, I'll, which, I'll is, which it. that's crazy because I think the Rays and the B- Orioles are better than both of those teams. So that's funny how war is calculated and all that. I'll tweet my projections right after this ends. Okay. AL East projections. Yankees on top with a 95 and 67 record. That math just. <laughs> you said I. You said I cook so hard, real fast. <laughs> yeah, well, Boston we'll, on bottom, going seventy six and eighty six. That feels like a good amount of wins for the last. That's actually, that actually feels like a really good spot. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe like eighty. Boston always wins more games than they should for no reason at all. Real. Like, like Brian Bale will have like seventeen wins next year for no reason. And you're like, ah, oh, yeah. Sure. The same thing with like. The Rays. You look at their off season. It's like objectively, they probably had a pretty awful off season. It was a terrible one. They lost Tyler Glass now, but they got yeah. Ryan Pepio, and he's good. And then like the and best going to win eighty eight games. One of the best off season moves that wasn't the move is just Junior Caminero is going to be starting next year for them. He's a dog. So like, for sure. Yeah. So like, doesn't even make sense. No, they'll be good. I hate it. They lost a lot of guys to too. I don't even know who's going to be their starting outfield. It's going to be weird. Brandy? Yeah, Randy and then uh Lau. I don't even know who else. They lost Margot. I don't know. It's a weird the, team. The Rays are so weird. I'm so happy they they for now they've kept Randy. For now. It's, I don't even know if McClanahan's pitching this year. I think he's out for the season. Ooh, that's tough. That's that's not ideal. No, that's not ideal. To lose that's glass now and then ideal. And then McClanahan to be out for a year is actually really rough. Springs is back, though. Rasmussen's back, though. They're both really good. You, uh, Zach Elflin's there. 
He's really good. Savali's okay. Yeah, they still got a good pitching staff. God, I hate them so much. I hate them so <laughs> much. I can't stand them. They just, like, generate random dudes that are really good, then they go somewhere else, and then they're mid. Robert Stevenson. Why was he Jesus this year? Good pickup What's by the name? Angels, by the way. Right. Dree? Hmm? Dree? What was his last name? Starting pitcher that the Rays traded away probably like four or five years ago. It was Dree something, right? You, you lost me, man. Dree Archer or some <laughs> shit like that? Oh, Chris Archer. Chris Archer. Uh, Dree Archer's a football player, isn't he? Yeah, I'm like, what are you saying, <laughs> man? Chris Archer. Yeah, wait, Chris Archer Dree... famously got glass now to the Rays and then came back. He's not very good. Andre Archer was a running back and a return specialist for the Steelers. <laughs> you cooked. I had the last name right. Kinda, he kind of cooked. I mean, I was there. Mm, something like that. Something, something like being there. All right, we got one more pickup to look at. I have so many tabs open. I don't even know where it went. Gregory Santos. But, yes, Gregory Santos. Wait, did I lose my tab? Hundred percent gone. I, dude, Sent, I have like shot dead in in the streets of uh, Chicago because that's where he no longer plays. Um, Gregory Santos gets traded to the Mariners. Very cool. Uh, the Mariners are very slowly becoming a pitching factory, which I don't like, but it's it's true. They have a lot of young guys that have just gotten way better, and or like guys they'll pick up that they get there and they're just way better. Look at Andres Munoz. Obviously, um, they they got Luis Castillo, and he was already good, but Castillo's better than he's ever been. Uh, they have they have some really good. George Kirby had a fantastic season last year, and they kind of needed a reliever. They they've added some bats, and in the most Seattle way possible, where to get like bats that aren't like great but like pretty good. Gregory Santos might have the best slider in baseball. That was it, like, 91. It's hit 95 a couple times this year. Fastball is really, really fast. But his fastball doesn't get a lot of whiff. It doesn't get a lot of swing and miss, which is something that is really interesting in just modern baseball now, that fastballs, like, over 99, if they're flat, just suck. And then, like, guys that, like, you know, we, we keep bringing up Yankees, but, like, Nestor Cortez, there was, like, 91, but arm angle and spin rate and this fastball is just like unhittable sometimes. So this guy throws 99 to 103 and his fastball needs some work. If there's any team that you want to go to, to get your fastball when it's a four seamer to get some work, it is the Mariners right now. Luis Castillo is the best fastball in baseball next to Garrett Cole. And it's kind of hot. And if you're going to learn from somebody, learn from him. Honestly, you know, Gregory Santos, I I could pull out a list if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to because it's time consuming. He is just part of the long list of pitchers that over the past, say, three, four five years or so have said, forget the four seam fastball. Let's just throw a sinker instead. And it completely changed their game. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing that I notice between 2021 and 2023 um in 20 well it doesn't go back to 2021 of course because oh yeah it does he threw the fastball 37 percent of the time that's a lot it's a lot and in 2022 again reading it correctly here 37 percent of the time and then all of a sudden in 2023 Changes to a sinker, throws that 40% of the time, throws the fastball 2% of the time, and he's one of the nastiest relievers in baseball. Yeah. And this is an ongoing thing um, where pitchers are just saying, forcing fastball, not forget that. Let's throw a sinker instead. And it has turned around careers. Well, especially when you're a reliever specifically, uh, sinkers are so much better because you're getting one at bat. First stack, like you're you're pitching the five batters most likely, as a reliever, uh, so you can kind of get more out of your your arm side run on your sinker if it if it's going arm side and not just straight down, and you can get just more value out of that than just trying to blow by fastballs because there's a good chance that 
if they've been seeing normal fastballs all game because most starting pitchers throw predominantly four seam fastballs. So you get these pitches that are ground ball inducing more likely than not. And it's really hard. So there's a chance that they swing and miss. Like you're already two for two on the checks of things you want to do as a pitcher. You strike them out of ground ball and valid sinkers and sliders are some of the best ground ball pitches in baseball. So there's a reason that like 90% of great relievers throw both of those pitches one of them specifically. I don't think there's a good reliever in baseball that doesn't throw one of them besides like David Bednar, but he's a freak and his splitter is like insane. Um, but like outside of him, like there's nobody that doesn't throw one, if not both of those pitches. And hey, he leaned into the sinker, had a really good year. He's again, 98th percentile in fastball velo and barrel percentage. It just doesn't happen. Since he switched to, this, to the sinker, he does not get barreled at all. Never. So it's weird to talk about a reliever like this, but I think this is like an impact arm. Like this is like if Munoz comes back healthy, the Mariners have like an eighth and ninth inning kind of shut down situation, which is fun, which they kind of need because like the Astros have a, a one or a seven, eighth and ninth inning shut down situation right now. So anything to kind of bridge that gap for a team like the Mariners who do want to make a run in a really tough division. Now the World Series champs are in that division. And the Astros are always the Astros. We don't talk about the other two teams. We don't talk about the other two we teams. We don't talk about the other two teams. We did talk right. about the other one earlier. Yeah, I feel like the Angels are so mid that we don't even have to talk about them. Like They're not even on like the A's level where it's like, yikes, this is embarrassing. I want to yap. Where like the Angels <laughs> are like, eh, whatever, man. Well, I mean, you could yap about the Angels, you know, if you just want to put on your hating goggles and, you know, your 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 best hating uniform, you could be like, <laughs> they just had Shohei Otani and Mike Chow for a few years and couldn't make the playoffs still. Everybody point and laugh. Everybody point and laugh. <laughs> Bro, just, dude, yo, 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 you just reminded me. This is, okay, another little tangent. Again, I work in a middle <laughs> school. I work at a middle school, right? I'm watching these. I'm watching this group of kids play tag. Okay. This this one girl runs up to to another girl. Tag runs away. Hits a, hits a Fortnite emote Ooh. and starts running again. Vicious. Vicious. I looked at it and like it was so stupid. But like my only reaction was just nice. <laughs> <laughs> I want to cheer them on. Like I'm not mad at you. I'm not gonna tell you to right. stop. That was funny. <laughs> Do it again. Yeah, like like. Kids say the weirdest, like the wildest stuff, and it's yeah. funny because they'll be talking trash to each other, and on the outside, I'm like, "Guys, stop! You can't do that." But on the inside, I'm like, "Yo, that's some shit I would say." Yo, like, got cooked. <laughs> like, Yo, you got I, cooked. I, I would say, like, because <laughs> that's funny when they get cooked and you can't laugh. <laughs> you're like, "Yep," and you're just you just gotta like, both of you stop. Take a drink of water, like recalibrate <laughs> real fast. No, that's no the best part, right? Mm -hmm. it, like the best part is when you'll have a student that for some reason they'll just they'll, they'll mess with you, they'll call you names. You come back at them with something slick and they'll just They're so hurt. Like like they would They're never so expect an adult to ever do that in their life. <laughs> like I don't got decades of experience clapping back. Right. Come so on. Man. Like I I've been through school already. I do this. I don't know what to say. I do this. I get yelled at on the internet. Real. Real. I've been in COD lobbies. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I've been in COD lobbies. I, I've heard a thing or two, man. <laughs> I've heard a thing or two. God damn. COD lobbies are crazy. Thankfully, those are kind of gone. You know, in Fortnite yeah. now, they, uh, they, they, in creative maps, they record for like two minutes. So if you say anything crazy and then like you get reported... They'll go back and get that recording. And they'll be like, oh, nice. yeah, you did say that. No, it's kind of sick. It's very nice. It's very nice. That's awesome. So you can get banned for just, like, saying, like, the most outrageous stuff ever, which is good. We should have been. In, when we played COD, we should have been. There's no reason that was, like, mom in the other room. The things that were being said were being said. There's no reason. <laughs> dude, some people come, in those COD lobbies, shut they, up, mom. Dude, they deserve jail time. Just based on the things they said in COD lobbies. 
Yeah. The atrocities so- that they have promised. <laughs> That they never even did. Not only did they promise them, but they failed to bring them true. You cowards. <laughs> you one cowards. Thing, one thing I wanted to talk about. Let's segue back into baseball talk here. Um, I know there is a, a, a large group of people on Twitter wow. who, after the Dodgers signed um, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, mm-hmm. They were all like, wow, no, no way. How could you give this guy like $30 million a year? He's never even pitched in the major leagues before. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, because he's nasty and he's projected to have the 16th highest war by steamer. So that's why you pay him that much. Or just pitchers. Just pitchers. Sorry. Just pitchers. He's projected to be the 16th highest. That's kind of crazy. I, um, it is kind of crazy. I do know we came into this episode with full anticipation to talk about steamer projections for pitchers. We did. Um, we're going to push that back, but I do want to talk to Yamamoto for a second because we've never actually talked about Yamamoto on here. But we will no. talk about that next episode because we're already kind of deep in this bad boy. So we're not going to get another 40 out of us. That ain't happening. You're not getting me today, devil. Absolutely not. I got to go eat dinner. I got to shower. That's Monday Night saying. Raw is on at 8 o'clock. It like, is on, exactly. We got things to do. I but Yamamoto, like you said, 3.4 projected war, which is crazy. Um. I, I kind of glazed the Luis Castillo a second ago. That's the same war as Luis Castillo, by the way. Um, yeah. And, I mean, it's projections, obviously. Uh, and the the wild part is he has a objectively low ground ball expected rate, which is typically what makes pitchers pretty good. You know, high strikeout, high ground ball. Um, what's going to make him good? He's not going to walk that many people. He's going to strike out people about as good as anybody else. He has, like, a seven-pitch mix. <laughs> Which is gonna be really nice. Dude, and he just throws all the pitches. He throws every pitch, I think, literally besides a sinker. Uh, and he has crazy good control, and the Dodgers make pitchers better. Like, I am scared to see next year specifically when you have Yamamoto a year in the States kind of settled in because it takes a little bit. It's not like this is a I'm going to Arkansas. This is a, I'm going from Japan to LA. Person like, Arkansas. Exactly. It's a random state. Like, I'd be fine going to Arkansas, man. I mean, sure. Coming to a different country is crazy. So, within that year, but next year you'll have Otani pitching too, where Otani's also in the Dodgers pitching lab. Otani's already one of, like, the 10 best pitchers in the league. He's going to actually learn how to throw that sinker. And I'm a little scared. That's a next year problem, though. Unmoved. Unmoved. Don't care. Otani, bum. You see that scar on his Don't elbow? Care. Dodgers are just going to, until the end of time, be the greatest regular season team in history. Don't care. They definitely are, though, so shout out to them. They really are. They really are. They I mean, you know, terrifying. it's it's funny because um, people love to clown on the Dodgers for all of their regular season success that hasn't translated to championships. Mm-hmm. But, like, there'll be fans of, like, I don't know, the What's Mariners. Team? Yeah, they'll be fans of like the Mariners. <laughs> the Mariners. And it's like, would you rather be a fan of a team, and I won't just single out the Mariners, but like the Mariners, that has historically been bad, I'd say. For for most of their history, they've they've been pretty bad. Yeah. They've had their years, of course. Um and just like every once in a while you get hope or would you rather be a Dodgers fan and be like, I can watch a great team every year. Every We've year. always got a chance to win. And we have like, it, but it's there. And yeah, it's, I mean, you, would, I'll, some people are cynical and they'd be like, no, this sucks. There's so much hope and I get disappointed every year. It's like, I mean, would you rather just like not have any expectations and just like not care yeah, about right? your team? Like I, I genuinely, can say this as a, as a Knicks fan. I stopped watching the sport for half a decade, almost, because I didn't even have a reason to watch the games because the team was win- so bad and winning like eighteen a year. I, I mean, like they did that for like two years, and like I'm not even talking just that. Like when they were winning like thirty five and like forty games a year, I'm like, who is this? Like, what is this doing? What? Who does this help? There's no, there's nothing exciting about this team. That's why Mello was so cool. It's exciting. It was really good. Mm. But same thing. Like I would way rather be part of a team with expectations and good players. And if nothing else, like Mookie's gonna have some cool moments. Real. It's like um, 
when you're a bad college team, but you wind up with a Heisman, like LSU this year, they weren't, like, bad, but, like, yeah, they lost three or four games, but Jaden Daniels was crazy and had one of the better seasons we've ever seen. He had a better statistical season than Joe Burrow. That's awesome. I do that's not awesome. watch college sports. It's very lame. Not a fan. I, under, I understand. I Just understand. not a fan. I, I get it. I see the video. I mean, I like, like, college football is fun sometimes. Oh, it's fun. But, like, but like oh, especially, fun. like, I never understood whenever someone's like, dude, college basketball is so much better than the NBA. Look how much passion they have. And I'm like, dude, look at them shooting 33% combining for 40 turnovers. Like, I, I'm not yeah, having fun. It's I mean, not I've, fun. I've just watched college basketball games, too, and like 55 to 52, and it's like... Yeah, I was going to say, and they combine for there's, 120 there's like points. Eight, there's like eight to six runs over like a six-minute period. It's like... Ugh. You just watched... Uh, what is it? Is it like a... It's two halves, right? It's two 20-minute like halves, yeah. Yeah. You just watched a 20 out, so. minute half where they scored 25. 26 points. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> it happens. It happens all the time. Now, this weekend, there were some really good games, which was cool. I know we're super like off base here, but like there were some Completely. really good games this weekend. And they were all high scoring, too. It was like number two UNC versus like number six Duke. That was like 94 to like 80 something. That was sick. That's fun. We had like a Kansas game where they wound up blowing out Houston, but like they put up like 80, and it's like, ooh, look at this. We got scores, <laughs> baby. Yeah. So it's a good college basketball year if you ever cared. But if don't. you don't, I understand. It's a good year for it. We'll do a bracket. And you know what's actually crazy? No, this is I was about to lie on the timeline. Um I was gonna say, like, usually like in years past, even though I don't watch college basketball, I could always be like, Oh yeah, there's that college player. But I was about to say, like, there's, there's no not, one I could even... There's not. This is a weird like, year. There's there's no, like, super big name this year. Yeah, I mean, like, of course, Bronny James is in college, but, like... He almost died. Dude, who's who's the big star in college basketball right now? Um, R.J. Davis. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. What about Probably Cooper not. Flag? Oh. I've heard that name before. The only reason I heard that name is because some fifth grader was like, "Yo, dude, Cooper Flag, he's he's nasty, dude." And I was like, "I, I don't there, know." Who that there is, is um the be- no the biggest name in college basketball right now is uh, Jared McLean because he was like a really really big TikToker, and then he went to Duke, and now he's just oh. a big di- TikToker at Duke. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That so guy. like, no, but like actually, like he's very big. Like, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. he's good too. <laughs> I promise. I promise. But, um, yeah, we're not going to do our steamer stuff this week. We're going to do those whenever the next episode is. Um, obviously, we still have a couple weeks before the season starts, so we're not necessarily in a rush. But, you know, there was some cool stuff. Shout out to Bobby Witt. Shout out to Corbin Burns. Making some teams better. Same with Gregory Santos. And we, we rambled about walking a lot today. So I appreciate that. If you guys uh, like the content, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, follow us at Spectators Media on TikTok and Twitter. And we got some uh, good stuff. I'm excited. We'll get some clips out there from you for this episode, too. It was a good one. Later, everybody. Whoop.